like to start. Thank you all for coming and uh, staying for my talk. Uh, so um, I'll be talking about the inverse problem of uh, fractal potentials. So um, I've introduced fractal potentials in uh, some of my previous talks, um, and I've also got a free on it. Uh, and it was also part of my uh, PhD thesis. Um, so I'm currently uh, an independent scholar looking for an academic position. Um, so the objectives of this talk are reportedly uh, to uh, review uh, IFS and the American measure just to make sure that um, you all know uh, the basic um, issues and I guess you all you know. Um, and then introduce um, uh, practical potential construction in general. Um, so uh, the point of this is uh, to give you an idea of um, if you want to deal with other kinds of uh, partial differential equations, um, how you might go about constructing fractal potentials for them, <clears throat> and then um, detail three specific constructions, and then uh, describe the most problem and uh, some solution methods. So um, I'm just kind of citing uh, the relevant works I have. Um, written and working on. So the first two, my thesis and the fractal potential flows are um, written and uh, I'm working on the last two. So um, <clears throat> to give an outline, so I'll be talking about uh, IFS, fractal potential construction in particular cases, um, and then the inverse problem. And um, for the particular case that I'll be detailing, uh, I'll also discuss the interpretation, as well as um, uh, some solution methods which uh, already exist in the literature. So uh, an integrated function system is, um, in, in this context, is a family of um, planar or um, higher dimensional similitudes in a Euclidean space. So uh, in that case, you would have uh, and the k times a rotation matrix. Um, and uh, it's a standard way to uh, define Hutchinson operator. Um, and according to Hutchinson's theorem, um, this operator has a unique um, fixed point, um, which we call the uh, IFS attractor or IFS fractal. <coughs> and uh, we can arrive at this um, attractor through. Uh, this address generation implementation, which is the closure of um, all the uh, address maps of uh, some C, some point, which can be arbitrarily chosen. Um, so, sorry, <laughs> I was saying to remove that part. Just to know if that, yeah, no. Oh, it's good now. Yeah, thank you. So, Yeah, so in the other generation and uh, compositional maps um, and I've taken from some address set. So uh, visually, this is what's happening. So we are linearing the action of two maps and uh, iterating um, this um, combined map uh, by infinitum uh, until it converges to and uh, the initial set can be um, any set, not just a square, but any complex set. <clears throat> so the action of the maps is, um, this is actually kind of relevant, um, as we'll see later. Um, there's either you know, some kind of a logarithm spiral, and an exploratistic case of that, so straight lines. And uh, the resulting attractor can be quite varied visually. Um, so we might um, guess that perhaps uh, complex sets in general can be uh, well approximated by this class of uh, complex sets uh, for appropriate uh, IFS parameters. So uh, I'll be taking that idea further, of course. And, um, but first, let's uh, talk a little bit about the invariant measure of IFS. So. Um, it's usually tied to um, the name of four people. So it's either called a Monsch-Kantorovich metric or in um, 
fractal geometry with functions on metric. Also, the box of Stein one metric. Um, so it's taken over um, Lipschitz one functions. So we take the supremum and um, take this difference with um, test functions. But the point is, um, we're trying to uh, measure some kind of difference between uh, the measures. So um, new one, new two are uh, probability measures over fixed compact X um, and um, MXT is a uh, complex metric space in that case. So um, if we denote um, this operator, so PK star as being um, this action of um, taking a uh, new of PK inverse of S, um, then if we combine such maps in a um, in a weighted way, so we can call this uh, we want WN uh, weights or um, uh, probabilities, but certainly a uh, convex combination of these actions. So this combined Markov transfer operator is, con is going to be contracted um, over this uh, complete metric space. So by uh, Barak's point here, it has a unique fixed point, uh, a very measure. So, um, the main idea behind uh, fractal potentials, or we might also say invariant potentials, is um, for the sake of uh, the easiest um, path to um, uh, showing uh, an invariant uh, potential, is to link probability measures to potential functions somehow. Um, and um, as you may recall, that's possible through uh, for a Poisson's equation. Um, so, um, and that way we can show the unique existence of a uh, fractal or invariant potential as well. Uh, otherwise, um, whatever function space I'm going to be defining, otherwise we'd have to show that, um, you know, that's a complete um, metric space as well, which can be quite difficult. So that's what I'm avoiding here. Um, so what do you mean invariant? Sorry? What do you call invariant? Uh, I'll be defining that later, but it's basically you know, a function that's similarly invariant under some kind of a transfer operator. So, <clears throat> so the main point is that you know, I'm trying to, um, whatever function space they would be living in, uh, I'm trying to avoid having to show that that's a complete um, space. So instead, I'm linking uh, potentials to uh, probability measures through actually an uh, isomorphic Morphism, so a bijective uh, isometry, and um, so that way um, and we can avoid that. So, uh, um, but just first of all, uh, let's just consider the inverse problem for sets of measures. Um, so, these attractors are going to be used uh, as, as a class of um, approximators. So, given a target uh, compact set S and an epsilon accuracy. Um, the task is to find the line of S uh, for some uh, cardinality, um, that can be also variable, uh, such that, um, but it's typically it's fixed in the beginning, so, uh, such that uh, for the generated IFS, um, fractal, for the fractal is going to be uh, close to a uh, target complex. So uh, similarly for measures, um, we might uh, also uh, fix the cardinality a priori, uh, but then um, um, we are seeking an IFS uh, with associated weights, because so we'll be uh, combining um, the action of the push forward uh, according to those weights, uh, so that the invariant measure, according to that, uh, combined map um, is going to be uh, close to the target measure, so under epsilon. Uh, so this is, uh, so you might more already uh, see that this is sort of a um, um, potentially a computational problem uh, for um, practical applications. Uh, so in that uh, spirit, um, we have the Collage theorem, which um, uh, makes it easier to um, resolve the 
this inverse problem. They've shown it as well. So um, if um, we have an S target set, and um, suppose that there exists an IFS for which, um, according to the Hutchinson map of that IFS, um, the set and its map is under this quantity, uh, then for the attractor we will have the necessary function. So basically, what we can do um, in the simplest example is uh, just to um, run some kind of an optimization algorithm in the IFS parameters and um, just compute this distance between S and, and the Hutchinson map according to that IFS. Uh, so varying the IFS parameters, we are trying to go below this quantity. And of course, um, allow the stars to find here. So for measures, um, the Collage theorem is um, very similar. And of course, this makes um, inverse, resolving the inverse problem a lot easier computationally. So yeah, that's basically what I explained here, that we are optimizing in the IFS parameters. OK. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, actually how to construct uh, fractal potentials. Um, so, fractal potentials are always associated with some kind of a small phenomenon, uh, some kind of a partial differential equation describing that fractal phenomenon. Um, so, we take a linear homogeneous PDE, um, the fundamental solution that we know uh, explicitly. And um, based on that, we define the appropriate uh, push forward so, and the weighted transfer. So we, we, want, we want to have a transfer operator, but it has to be uh, defined in a way that um, uh, everything works out um, in the rest of the uh, theorems. So, from the fundamental solution, we expect a definitive uh, parameter, which I'm going to be calling the character, um, through a uh, boundary condition at infinity. So the boundary condition has to be um, at infinity because this uh, transfer operator is going to be um, contracting in uh, the space. So we can't have any other kind of boundary condition, basically. Um, because obviously we are going to be iterating this uh, transfer operator in order to arrive at an invariant uh, potential. Um, so we need to stay within the space while iterating. Okay? So um, for that reason we need a boundary condition at infinity. Um, and that will also be, um, let's say, uh, suggested by the fundamental solution how to define that boundary condition. <clears throat> so when I go into the examples, it will become more clear what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, this uh, character, this boundary condition at infinity, uh, it must be uh, linear and preserved uh, for convolution with a density function. Um, so and then uh, we did demonstrate the existence and uniqueness of the solution, the non-homogeneous uh, PDE. Uh, with the density function right hand side and the above boundary function. So that's the whole point of having this boundary function in case so that we would have uh, existence and uniqueness of uh, solutions. Because, like I said, um, basically we want to arrive at a link between probability measures and um, functions, um, and that link should be bijective. Right? So we want existence and uniqueness. Actually, bijective isometric. So, the standard part, which is sort of the easy part of constructing fractal potentials, is uh, the second part, which is um, to, um, well, not quite the second part, but this is here that um, uh, introducing the measure map and showing that it is a bijective isometry between solutions. Um, the PD and uh, probability measures. 
Um, so that's actually quite standard. Um, and then uh, defining the function space, showing that the transfer commu commutes with the measure map. Um, so that earlier transfer operator, the weighted combination. And then uh, showing the existence and uniqueness of an invariant function by applying um, uh, the bottom uh, spot theorem. Uh, and so if you apply to the space of the you can measure. Sorry? The this point theorem applied to the space of the you can measure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, potential flows. Um, so the idea of invariance um, occurred to me actually uh, based on um, certain kind of um, solution to um, the Laplace equation in the plane. So uh, combining a, um, a sink and a vortex. Um, and if we combine them with appropriate proportions, we get basically a uh, flow field which is, um, consists of uh, logarithmic spiral spin functions. Um, so we can actually check that this particular um, spin function um, is um, invariant with respect to this uh, trajectory. Um, so if we plug it into uh, the spin function, then we will get that. Uh, same thing. So we might say that uh, this spin function is invariant under uh, the push forward according to this simple T uh, transfer. So the, idea, the first idea was that uh, this um, spin function may be the attractor of the star in some uh, function space. And if that's the case, then um, uh, we, may be, we may be able to combine such T stars to weights and uh, still be able to show an attractor as well. And uh, so the second idea is that uh, a bijective correspondence between uh, probability measures and potentials by a Poisson's equation would imply uh, the invariant flow. So that's the idea I want to talk about. <coughs> so um, what is the character or boundary condition at infinity? So, it's two words for the same thing, but uh, you know this character can be um, written as a function of the spin function. Sorry. So uh, the definition of character. So it's just purely algebraic uh, manipulation. So I'm trying to extract this c, um, which um, is a complex number that uh, characterizes um, the shape of the eddy. So um, basically the steepness of the logarithmic spiral steams, steam function, uh, steam lines, sorry. Uh, so uh, that can be done through uh, this operation, so which can be considered to be a boundary condition at infinity, that um, we take any center P and uh, any sequence, um, subsequence of um, complex numbers, um, and we require that this limit exists. So with this um, operation, basically this falls out, fall apart, and we are left with C. And um, basically, uh, it can be shown that you know taking any P center will still arrive at that C. So this um, C is uh, denoted as the character of the uh, spin function. So uh, the actual theorem, which says that there's correspondence, um, is that uh, for any uh, that's the function, there exists exactly one um, spin function, um, these properties, such that um, Poisson's equation holds in that form. And um, so this is already very, very close to building a, um, a correspondence between probability measures and Steam functions. So, how much more time? 15 minutes? Seven. Seven? Seven? Okay. Um, so, um, the, the 
scriptural um, correspondence is this measure map, um, which uh, is going to be um, the bijective um, isometric that I mentioned. So it's down here in this term. And then it actually commutes with the transfer operator I introduced earlier. Um, so um, in this full space, um, uh, we'll remain within this full space if uh, iterating according to that transfer operator, and we'll actually have conversions. So, so this transfer operator has a unique fixed point over uh, this metric space, um, and we basically just simply transfer all the results from measures to pot uh, potentials through this bijective isometric. And um, the sync singularities will be uh, high fast fractal. So this is another representation of the um, invariant potential or invariant uh, flow in this case. Mm -hmm. So we can um, generalize this further to Laplace equation in 3D. So again, the aim is to uh, decide the character. So so some algebraic manipulation, um, which sort of analogous or a generalization of the earlier. Um, the challenge is, um, is um, partly showing this uh, theorem of correspondence between uh, functions and densities. And for the wave equation, uh, same kind of program. Um, but here we also have uh, time, so we are in space time. And uh, the character, extracting the character becomes a lot more complicated. I'm not even going to go into the actual um, algebra here, um, but um, it will be in an upcoming paper. So, so the statement of the inverse problem, so I'm going to talk about the inverse problem for potential flows only and uh, discuss the interpretation. So given the target flow um, and some required accuracy, the task is to find uh, IFS and weights uh, such that uh, the induced invariant flow will be close to um, the target uh, flow field. Um, so again, according to the Collage theorem, we can um, um, resolve this uh, computation. So it's kind of an interpretation of um, this um, metric between um, stream functions is um, that um, the measure map mu is uh, basically an isometric um, isomorphism between measures and flows. So uh, muing each element of um, mu x is a potentially infinite um, convex combination of direct deltas and the metric um, BC basically measures the um, difference between the flows according to their power. So according to the flux uh, through um, the set x. So the inverse problem is basically about uh, matching singularities and the rest of the flow field is um, basically consequential um, due to uh, Poisson's equation and um, the, um, the boundary condition at infinity. So, solution methods for resolving the inverse problem uh, are, um, um, these are standard solutions in uh, the literature, are moment matching gradient methods, similarly annealing genetic algorithms. So, um, these have been, um, also these have been tried computationally and are described in the literature. So, uh, the above algorithms are over probability measures. So, um, I'm sort of proposing um, or suggesting um, adaptations here. Uh, so perhaps uh, the efficiency can be improved if, um, if uh, they are applied specifically to uh, these classes of uh, functions. So the summary, so basically I gave an overview of life class, uh, discussed uh, the construction of fractal potentials, um, the new particular 3D cases, um, Interpreted the inverse problem and uh, this is some, some solution methods. So giving all the cited papers at the end. And, uh, that's about it. Thank you.